Bologna in Emilia-Romagna is a truly beautiful city in one of the richest regions of Italy. It oozes culture of the very highest standard and yet it seems to happily slip under the radar. Bolognese sauce is from this region. The university here is at its geographical and cultural heart. It's worth taking your time to explore Emilia Romagna, as for here you'll learn about life, food and pasta, and I intend on learning as much as I can. Today, Adam and Louis travel to Bologna in Emilia Romagna. Here he learns the authentic recipe for Bolognese sauce loses himself in wheels of Parmigiano Reggiano and tastes authentic balsamic vinegar from Modena. This is my pilgrimage. Come share the journey with me. Many people know about the culture of Emilia Romagna or much about the role that the University of Bologna has played in creating that culture. It has attracted some of the great minds of history from all over the world to teach and learn. So there was always ideas coming in and out of Bologna from around the world and people would come here to Piazza Maggiore to express their opinions freely. It's like a melting pot. Guys, I'm after some help. But I want to know how to make the traditional bolognese sauce. From Bologna? No? No, no. no it's only heat. Ragu! 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 The traditional um, ragu uh, mm. from Bologna is uh, very, um, very important for the, for, the, for the people here. Carota, sedano, cipolla, porco, maiale, prosciutto, prosciutto, the pig and beef yeah, mixed and the, together. Yeah. Mix it together. Uh, and the vino rosso bianco. 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 Bianco, yes. Mm. Yeah, so. no, 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 no. It's uh, red, Just like red. Uh, like a blood. Ah. <laughs> Penne, spaghetti, quello che vuole. Macale. Poi tagliatella. Tagliatella. Oh. Tagliatella. Eh, Oppure torta lì. Ah, tagliatella. Eh, sì. la tagliatella. Tre ore. Three hours, three hours. Four hours. And Parmigiano. A must. Absolutely. Made in Italy. Yeah, of course. <laughs> no other way. Is there family wars because who makes the best bolognese sauce? Is there competitions? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Adam meets Ilaria De Fidio, a chef who he hopes can clarify what the authentic bolognese sauce recipe is. So, Ilaria. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So, what are we doing straight up? So now I uh, just warm the pot and, and add a little olive oil. Okay, carrot, onion and celery. This is... So we've got beef? Yes, we have two parts of beef and one part of pork. Okay, this recipe is registered, I understand, by the government here, by the local government. Yes, the Chamber of Commerce. It's what, to keep the authenticity yes. of this recipe. Yes. This is when the meat starts to release all its nice yes. natural juices. It starts to cook out and brown. Are you going to be using wine? Yes. White or red? Uh, the tradition says white. Why? Because tradition says. But you, what's your, uh, do you follow tradition or do you I, break the rules? No, not necessarily. I prefer to use the red one yeah. because uh, for me, with the meat, it's better. Really? So now you're adding the wine? Yes. White wine? We follow the tradition. <laughs> Today? White wine. Okay. And then we are ready for the secret ingredient. The secret ingredient? Yeah, the secret of the grandmother. After the break, we show you the authentic Bolognese recipe. So when we see the, the wine has been absorbed, we Number are ready. One. We're ready? We are ready for the milk. It's in the secret ingredient. It's just a little bit. What's the next step? Passata, tomato? Yes, the last one. Now, it's not diced tomato. No, this is just tomato puree. Now... Tomato in? Okay, let's go. So the sauce has reduced down. It looks amazing, smells even better. 
And I think it's time to cook our pasta. I think it's time. <laughs> so, so, so in with the tagliatelle. Ready. Okay. Yeah, I think it's ready. Okay. We can drain it. While you're doing that, I'll make sure our sauce is not sticking. Wow, nice. Like that? Oh, you see my chef. Do we add all of it or just a few scoops? Oh, we can start uh, with a little bit. Oh. I think it's time to try it, Lari. I can't wait anymore. Oh, yeah. Wow, I get really nice and rich, creamy texture on my palate. And then the wow of the meat sauce and the ribbons of the tagliatelle floating around. Lari, I've got to ask you something. Would you serve a cheese with uh, this bolognese? You can. Yeah? What um, type of cheese? Obviously only Parmigiano-Reggiano. Ah. This region has many specialties. And there's three that pop to my mind. Prosciutto from Parma, vinegar from Modena, and Parmigiano-Reggiano. One of my all-time favorite cheeses. And to make this cheese, it's actually a long and expensive process. And I have a fourth generation producer of this cheese, Nicola, to explain a lot more. Ciao, Nicola. Ciao, Adam. So, Nicola, to make one of these wheels, how much milk do we need? 600 kilos of milk. 600 kilos of milk. Just for one. Wow. I understand it's a lengthy process, up to five years to produce one wheel. Look, Parmigiano Giano's secret is who lives inside the wheel. <laughs> Okay. Inside the wheel, you must have three good bacteria. I call them three amigos, my three amigos. So that's your key, your secret, is these three amigos. So they ferment, you know, uh, milk components mm. in Parmigiano-Reggiano flavor and taste. These three guys, you know, where they're born, yeah, where do they eat? They, they live on alfalfa grass in this region. Then all the process mm. is made to transfer them from the grass to the hay, from the hay to the milk, from uh, the milk to the cheese. Oh, and wow. if you have them, the cheese becomes wonderful. But the problem is, this year we make the grass and the hay. To have the three amigos, it must be aged at least one year. In one at year, okay. we are going to feed cows, mm. milking them, making the cheese. The cheese must be aged minimum two extra years. So and, three years. And to have a great, wonderful product, so to have a quality product, yeah, yeah. keep it another extra, two extra years. Then, essentially five years, five years to... without money. So yeah, no only, money coming in. Only outflows without inflows to make a wonderful cheese. But I'm sure that when we are going to taste it, you will be really satisfied. So how do you maintain all this cash flow? If you've got all this money going out and not coming in, how do you...? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> this is a good question. So we invented, um, a, let's say, a restaurant, a shop and a club that we, we called the Music Dairy. The Music Dairy. That day. essentially is a kind of party. We have money, cash flow by this coming. operation to finance a great quality cheese production. It's incredible because young generations, you know, combine, for example, a Long Island with a four years old cheese, a mojito with a 12, you know, month cheese. Yeah. So it's a new wave of tasting Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese. After the break, Adam is lost in the world of Parmigiano-Reggiano. What I love about food is I'm constantly learning new and exciting recipes and this one is unbelievable. It has a little twist to how we serve it at the end. So the chef is getting in the olive oil into the pan and the onions, they're from Tropeo. I remember visiting Tropeo and these onions are nice and sweet but still a little bit picante bitey. It's going to have lots of flavour, the onion, the guanciale and a good amount. Uno. And two, do it. 
Three. Ah, three packets. Ah, vino, vino rosso. In with some red wine. Into the pan next, the pomodoro or nap sauce. Next, fava. Fava. What I liked is that the rosemary wasn't torn apart into shreds. It's just the whole big piece of rosemary into the sauce. So we fish it out later on, or maybe we leave it in there. Salt, no salt. I just asked no salt whatsoever. Because guanciale. Chefs have said me because the guanciale has enough salt to basically flavour the pasta sauce. So the pasta's ready, it's been cooking for about five, six minutes. Sauce has changed colour, come nice and deep, rich red colour. Oh, hot. Ah, look at all that spaghetti into the sauce. Woo! So here it is, that very secretive, different way of serving the pasta. And this is traditional to the region, that it's served inside the encasing of the Parmesan milk. I don't think I've ever seen this in Australia, ever done before. And what happens is, oh, the smell, oh, it's putting so much Parmesan on top and mixing it, mixing it through so the natural wax from that skin of the Parmesan will flavour the pasta dish. Wow, even more Parmesan on top of this pasta dish. Machada. Okay. Oh, the smell, imagine serving this to a big family occasion, bringing it out to the table, plonking it in front of all your family and friends. When Adam finally pries himself away from the wonderful wheels of cheese, he sets off to a farm just outside of Modena, where they grow the grapes and make the balsamic vinegar in accordance with ancient traditions. I use this ingredient a lot in my kitchen back home, balsamic vinegar, and it's produced with tradition and innovation. And I have Giovanni, the commercial director, to explain a lot more about this to me. Ciao Giovanni. Pleased to meet you. Giovanni, can you explain to me what grapes are used in making balsamic vinegar? So, three most important varieties are allowed for the process. One is Lambrusco, typical of this area, mm. and the other two, the most important varieties in Italy, the Sangiovese and the Trebbiano. So it's those three grapes that have to make balsamic vinegar? Yes, especially for grape must, uh, these uh, varieties uh, are allowed uh, to uh, get concentration of uh, grapes uh, okay. and obtaining one of the two most important uh, ingredients of balsamic So you say vinegar. one of, what's the other ingredient? Is wine vinegar, okay. just wine vinegar. So with grape must and wine vinegar and the three different types of grapes, make balsamic vinegar. Yes, absolutely, you are right. One uh, lane is directed to obtain from wine, uh, wine vinegar, mm -hmm. and the other uh, stream is to get the best grape must uh, and to get the concentration of uh, sugar. So with the grape must, you have different percentages which make the different types of balsamic, is that correct? In fact, you are right. There are not only one balsamic vinegar. Vinegar. We have three kinds of balsamic vinegar. Okay. According to the grape must percentage, you mean that till to 35% of grape must, mm. we have uh, a sugarness accorded for salads. Uh -huh. uh, from up to 55, you have hot dishes. So the balsamic vinegar related to pasta, Fish, meat. fishes, meat, and right, Very and up to 65%, you have the thickness and the highest density. Could I try some of these different types of balsamic? Yes, you'll taste the, uh, the difference, and you see that it's quite uh, acid. Eh? Mm, this is the one I use in my kitchen a lot. Yes, ah. but think, and this is good for salad, because only 25%, but go ahead, this is a 55%. Wow, it gets a bit thicker and colour changes a little bit. It's thicker and uh, the sweeter. Wow, that's really sweet. You wouldn't put that sweetness onto a salad. Yes. But with fish or meat, that'd be really nice and refreshing and it, just enough acid there, beautiful. Uh, Very true. You have to, add to, to absolutely adapt the different kinds of uh, grape master mm. percentage to your Australian cuisine. That's Very true. The, the, the challenge. <laughs> that That's is. Just to try uh, the top density. Project. Okay. So, what percentage is this one? 65. 65%. 65. So, this should so be quite small. You, you wow, see. Look at that. Wow. It's 
it's wonderful for fruit, for ice cream. And uh, what we usually say is to melt this one with ice cream. Vanilla. With ice cream. You melt. Uh, you it's know, fantastic. I've done it once with strawberries, poured it over the top of the strawberries, it was fantastic, but that's really thick, coats my tongue. Mm. Thanks to Giovanni for your knowledge of balsamic vinegar. With all the ingredients I collected, I'm going to create a pasta dish that's inspired by the region of Emilia Romagna. I really respect how Nicola has kept the tradition of making Parmigiano Reggiano alive by opening a restaurant and bar to keep the funding of making the cheese. And today I'm going to be making a tagliatelle pasta with butter, parmigiano and balsamic. For the full list of ingredients and method, visit Adam's Pasta Pilgrimage. First step to this recipe is we need to get our tagliatelle into the salted boiling water. I'm using this egg tagliatelle base. They come in these beautiful little nests, so be quite gentle with these. Just drop them into the water and allow them to unravel themselves. A little tip to help unravel those pasta, just use the back of your spoon, or in this case, a little sieve. Butter, use a top quality butter for this sauce. Into the pan, a good amount. Just a medium heat to allow that butter to melt down. Pasta's gonna take another three to four minutes. Take the pasta straight out of the boiling water into the pan. So you wanna make sure that your butter's nice and hot and bubbling away. Check our pasta. Nice and al dente. Oh, look at those ribbons of tagliatelle. Now, straight into the pan like so. That sizzles exactly what we're looking for. Nice flick. Good amount of pepper. This pasta definitely needs parmesan. It's like it's snowing parmigiano all over it. Like so. Drop your heat right down to low. And what's happened is it's thickened the sauce by adding the cheese also. It's coating the pasta. A little bit of balsamic just over the top. What the balsamic does, it helps the acid, helps cut through the richness of the cheese and the butter. You know, this is a fancy butter and cheese, seriously. I remember as a kid, mum would bring the butter and cheese to the table and I'd just dig in and go for it. I think this one's just a little bit more upmarket. Now, Adam can understand why the Italians think Emilia Romagna is home to some of the best food in all of Italy. From wheels of Parmigiano Reggiano to bottles of rich balsamic vinegar, a profusion of quality ingredients, all made by passionate producers. Next time, Adam stays in the region of Emilia Romagna and travels northwest from Bologna to Modena and on to Parma. He wraps himself up in the sublime taste of authentic prosciutto di Parma. Gobbles up a local delicacy, a dish with tortellini made by a world expert, and pays a visit to Ferrari, as you do. For this episode's recipes, stories and more, visit Adam's Pasta Pilgrimage 